Hey guys, hope everything's going well. You guys know that drill. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below. Follow me on Instagram at AIH underscore sports. Follow me on my finance channel at AIH Finance. So I was going through this uh, card ladder video on YouTube the other day. It's quite interesting. Uh, take a look uh, just to get uh, different perspectives. I always tell people to listen to all but follow none. And... In that video, I think it is at the 28 mark, Chris was talking about how people in the hobby have been going for sponsorships and he doesn't blame everybody doing it. He says it's okay, but he says that people are basic from my understanding, okay, that people are selling out, okay? And they're just taking that easy buck. Right now, it's it's becoming corporatized. It's becoming sellout nonsense bullshit. The All of the fun things of the hobby that we like to do, those things are being converted into, you know, ways to sell people on a service or a product. And that's not how hobby social media became, you know. And also it has impacted, this is from my understanding, it has impacted the type of content that you see on YouTube and social media, and he doesn't like that at all. And my thought process about all of this is, once again, I don't care, just my opinion, right? You guys are entitled to your own opinion. I don't care if someone gets a sponsorship. I discussed this the other day. Now, if it impacts the way that you report your news or how you act on your channel, and if you're being deceptive, I think those two things are not great for the hobby. And there probably are people that will take a buck for anything and will change their personality for that. So I understand that point of view. Now, that being said, someone could go to Chris and say, hey, look, man, uh, you sold your company to Collector's Universe, right? And once again, there's nothing wrong with it, and it actually should be embraced if uh, you're able to build a successful company and a bigger company could help with cash flow and actually grow the company more, provide more jobs, and actually benefit society more. So in that sense, it may not be bad, but here's the caveat. Some people may say that, hey, are you really selling out? That's the question some people are going to ask. And I think that uh, just going after content creators for taking sponsorships, just in my own opinion, uh, for the most part, I wouldn't go after someone if they take a deal with a grading company where I may go after someone is if, once again, their views change. They're being more deceptive. And it, I'll give you a good example. It doesn't have to deal with sports cards. Once again, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan took, what, $100 million over a long period of time, but he's silenced. He cannot speak what he used to speak. He cannot bring on guests that he used to bring on. And I told you those guys before, such as Owen Benjamin, Stefan Molyneux, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, this is, in my opinion, could be a problem with Fanatics coming in because Fanatics has a lot of money out there and they've raised so much capital. And with that capital, they're going to, in my opinion, be buying up influencers or they're going to be collaborating with influencers. And I think... The sports card investigator, he actually talked about that in his video. 
he discussed that I believe he saw openings, job openings from my understanding, uh, whatever it was. There, the writing is on the wall. The proof is in the pudding, and better yet, it's on the tape. Let's go. How do we get okay. you in here? So it's DAP Sports. You yeah. got that. Here we go. DAP Sports. Boom. Go. That's my fourth follow. We're and killing if, it. If you ever want to check out the sports car content, you just click it, right? I'm going to be on this tonight. I'm doing yeah. real market research tonight. Real market research. For those of you guys who do not know, that was Michael Rubin, the CEO of Fanatics. He used to own part of the Sixers. Um, and say what you want about the other young man, Daps. He is a guy that fanatics will be targeting if they have not already targeted. And you don't have to agree with Daps. You don't have to like Daps. You don't have to whatever with Daps. But the guy's hustling. He knows what he's doing. He's got a huge following. He attracts customers and he attracts people that fanatics wants. Uh, young people with money. And from what I saw in some of those videos... There's a lot of young people with lots of money, crazy money, crazy cards and crazy monies. Crazy monies, crazy money. <laughs> Same thing you can talk about backyard breaks. Backyard breaks had a big presence at the National from what I saw. And like it or not, these are the types of types of relationships that fanatics will foster. They will covet because it will bring them the people that they want. Uh, you know, I started to do some... There's going to be marketing money, and my opinion is FedEx going to be spending it on influencers that can get the most amount of clicks, most amount of views. Now, some people might say, hey, that's good for the hobby, that's great, more eyeballs, but at the same time, when you have a company like Fanatics that can dominate the industry, I think that could potentially be a problem because guess what? People are going to be scared to speak up against fanatics in anything they do. I'll give you two examples. Uh, remember the V Friends situation? People didn't talk about the Karen Ritchie uh, cartoon character, or not cartoon characters, the characters from Karen Ritchie's book, and whether or not uh, Gary V copied them, right? Gary Vee, I believe, does have the copyright based on the article that Darren Ravel wrote. But at the same time, a lot of people kept their mouth shut because they don't want to take off fanatics. They don't want to take off Josh Luber. Me, I, first of all, had a good impression of fanatics before they acquired the licenses. I was going to give them a shot, but then a few things happened, and then I'm like, okay... I don't know what to think of them. Now I see the Fanatics auctions lining up. I'm thinking, wow, okay. They could actually do a great amount of damage. And then now you see eBay, they just buy a TCG um, platform. I think they coughed up hundreds of millions of dollars for that today. So I believe eBay is ramping up to prevent uh, a Fanatics uh, auction website to dominate the industry or golden auctions because golden has uh, collector's universe money now, right there. They have been bought out by collectors or collectors have bought them out. But going back to fanatics, I get, I was given a tip also about uh, ca some cards being sold about 10 X and compared to what you could see on eBay. And once again, a lot of people didn't talk about it. There were a few people, by the way. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, if you speak up, if you're like me, there's no way you're going to be able to work in the industry. You may get some AdSense revenue here and there, uh, but that's about it. And if I didn't have an unfavorable opinion of fanatics, I'd probably apply for an accounting job. I saw one the other day, but I'm like, no, even though it's probably going to pay well, I just don't see eye to eye with them, right? And once again, the money would sound great, but my philosophy is the money will come to me down the road. So I'm not worried about that. It's I'm not like, oh, I want the money now, right? I think about the long term. And uh, 
suppose I did go with fanatics, right? I couldn't do these videos. My hands would be tied behind my back. I wouldn't have free speech, in my opinion. I couldn't say anything that I do in these videos. So yeah, that's just my thoughts. So in terms of corporate sponsorship, Chris does bring good points about, hey, it may hinder people from speaking up, but I would ask Chris, hey, look, man, you work for PSA or collectors, and a lot of people have concern about that company and some of the players at that company and what has happened in the past and what's going on now. So while he does have the right to... Uh, talk about corporate sponsorships someone could go to him and say hey, hey buddy hey uh, you know you were bought out right someone could accuse you of selling out I'm not saying that he did but I'm just saying that I don't know I just wouldn't do what he does but you know to each their own everyone has their right to say whatever they want whatever they want anyways guys uh, I I don't have people taking sponsorships as long as it doesn't hurt their ability or doesn't impair their ability to speak what they want to do. If they were speaking the same things before and after, and obviously they have to do a little bit of marketing for the company. Okay, I understand that to a certain extent. But before and after, if the content is the same, I don't care, right? It's actually a good thing because they're getting more money and they could spend it in the sports card arena, right? So I look at it that way. and But if they're just taking the money, going from sponsor to sponsor, don't care, and they just toe the line, don't speak up, I think that's a problem. That's just my opinion. What do you think, guys? Let me know. Remember, smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below, guys. Thank you. Bye.